So in this video we will learn how to simulate thermally induced deformations of a plate using Comsol Multiphysics software. So here is the system setup. We are assuming a plate and on the top surface of the plate there is a heat source of 6000 watts. And this is an animation of thermally induced deformations and this is the animation of uh, surface uh, temperature distribution that you can see over here. You can see that time constants are relatively uh, long. That is, this is due to the heat uh, transfer inside of the material, so basically due to the heat uh, conduction. And um, here we are also assuming that his heat is uh, that energy is dissipated through radiation boundary conditions acting on all six sides of the plate. So let us briefly explain the problem we are looking at. So we are looking into thermoelastic or thermally induced deformations of a plate. So here is our plate in three dimensions. The plate dimensions are 1 meter by 1 meter by 0 0.05 meters or 5 centimeters and we are assuming that there is a heat flux or heat source at the top surface and the total, total power is equal to 6000 watts. So the heat source will be acting on a circular surface and the radius of the circle will be 0 0.1 meter. Then we are going to assume that one of the sides of the plates, particularly this side, is fixed. Furthermore, we are going to assume radiation boundary conditions. So we assume that the energy will be dissipated through all six sides, through radiation mechanism. So we click on File, New, then we click on Model Wizard, then since we are considering a three-dimensional structure, we, uh, we click on 3D, then we click on Heat Transfer, Heat Transfer in Solid, we add, then we click on Structural Mechanics, we click on Solid Mechanics, Solid, we click on Add. Then we click on Study and we are considering uh, time response of the system, so we click on Time Dependent and we click on Done. So here is the main window of Cons Comsol Multiphysics package. Now, our first step is to define the system's geometry. So we click on geometry and, or you can click it over here and we select block since we are considering a plate. And here we define the plate dimensions. So uh, the width will be one meter, the depth will be one meter and the height will be zero point zero one meter or let's put it 0 0.05 meters so five centimeters thick plate one by one meter and we click on build select so here is our plate and our next step is to define a boundary heat source and for that purpose we will have to define the region of uh, the top um, mirror surface or the plate surface at which the external heat flux or heat boundary source is acting so to define such a surface and to define uh, the region we need to define a working plane. We need to introduce a new working plane. So here is the working plane. So we can click on working plane and here is the working plane menu. Now, uh, you see this shaded region. This is our current working plane. Now, we are going to offset this working plane since we want to define the heat flux at the top surface and the Z coordinate offset will be 
the thickness of the plate and we click on build selected and now you can clearly see that basically the working plane is placed at the top surface the next step is to define to define the region so if we click on a working plane and on plane geometry uh, we see a new screen and this is a basically a top view of our working plane and then we are going to just click uh, right click and we are going to define a circle and we are going to define a circle at the position 0 0.6 0 0.6 and the radius is going to be zero point one and we click on build select so here is our here is our boundary region and uh, the external heat flux will act on this surface the next step is to define two additional points that will be used to visualize the temperature change so we click on ge geometry right click and we click on more primitives and we click on points we repeat this Now, we are going to choose uh, the first point with the coordinate 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and with Z coordinate equal to 0 0.05. And you click on build select, the point will appear over here. And the second point will have the coordinates 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0.05 again so here are the two points these two points will be used to visualize the temperature change the next step is to define the material so we click on material right click add material and I'm going to choose an aluminum alloy from a list of recent materials I used however you can choose any material from material library over here double click on a double left click on the aluminum and here you can see uh, basic uh, mechanical and thermoelastic properties of the aluminum. Once we have defined the material and material properties, we need to define the boundary heat flux. So we click uh, on right click, we basically choose the right click and we click on um, boundary heat source. So we are telling to COMSOL that on this surface heat flux will be acting. Now we click on overall heat uh, transfer rate and we click on we select the power the heat power let's say 6000 watts this is a significant amount of power on such a small region but never mind and we have to tell to console that this heat flux boundary heat source or heat flux will act on this surface by clicking on this surface over here you can appear you can see here the internal surface numbering the next step is to define the radiation boundary conditions so by right clicking on heat transfer in solids we click on radiation we click on diffuse surface and here you can see the basic equation governing the heat uh, loss through radiation. It's a standard equation telling that the heat loss depends on the fourth power of the temperature. Uh, we select the ambi ambient temperature of 273 Kelvin and we choose the surface uh, emissivity. We choose user-defined surface emissivity. We choose 0 0.6 and we have to tell to console the sides or the surfaces of this box that will radiate heat. So we click on all six surfaces and we also click on this surface that defines the heat source. The next step is to define initial values. So we click on initial values and we, go, we are going to assume, assume initial value of 273 Kelvin. So we are assuming that basically all points have an initial temperature of 273 Kelvin and we click on build all. The next step is 
to uh, couple the solid mechanics with heat transfer in solids. So by clicking on linear elastic material and by doing the right click and clicking on thermal expansion, we will couple the heat transfer in solids part with the solid mechanics part. And here it's very important to choose the option temperature HD. In this way, basically we are coupling the temperature state variable with displacement state variables. Displacement state variables are basically part of solid mechanics uh, module and the temperature is a part of heat transfer in solid module. And we click on build all. And finally, we are going to say that one of the sides of, uh, uh, of this box is fixed. That is, it will not deform due to the temperature change. So we are going to choose a fixed constraint and we are going to assume that this side, side number two of this box will be fixed. And you can see over here the constraint that denotes that fixed surface. And we click on build all. Finally, we look at the mesh and we click on build all and here is our mesh. You can play with the mesh parameters by using, for example, a user control mesh or physics control mesh. We're going to use a physics control mesh and we're going to choose normal mesh size, although you can also use fine or coarse. Let's say if you choose fine, you're going to have a denser mesh or let's say extra fine, you're going to have even denser mesh. However, your computation will take longer, so you're going to take we're going to choose normal mesh parameter and we'll click on build all. The next step is to define the solution parameter. So we click on study and we click on step time dependent and we want to select the time intervals or discrete time instant at which the solutions will be computed. So uh, in this box, the range means uh, similar to MATLAB uh, the first zero is basically the starting time instant, Z 0 0.1 is the time step, and 1 is the basically the end time. In this case, the solution will be computed for 11, uh, 11 discrete time steps. Since the time constant of uh, temperature deformations are uh, relatively uh, large, we're going to choose a starting time of zero. We're going to use a step of five seconds and we're going to choose the final time of, of let's say, 3000 seconds. And by clicking build all, we are now ready to compute our solution. So by clicking on compute, console starts the computations. Here you can see the progress. Here you can see the log and it's going to take a while for console to compute the solution since this problem couples heat transferred with solid mechanic deformations. This is a computer I'm having computer having 16 gigabytes of RAM and i7 processor. The computer it's a laptop computer from 2017 basically and you're going to see in real time how long does it take for solution to be computed. So it's still computing. Now it's 73%. Almost done. 82%. And almost 99, 99%. And here is our solution. So the first screen you will see is basically the temperature distribution. So this is the temperature distribution at time 3000 seconds. Let us see how the temperature at previously defined points, point 1 over here and point 2 over here, how does the temperature at this point behave in time. For that purpose, we'll click on result and we click on 1D plot group and under the 1D plot group, we click on point graph. And then we can choose our point. So we're going to choose the point 6 and the point previously defined point 5. And by clicking on plot, here is 
the temperature change in time at these two points. This is the point that is closer to the heat source and this is the point that is further away from the heat source. Finally, we want to investigate the thermally induced deformation. So by clicking on result, we click on 3D group plot and under the 3D group plot, we click on volume. Now, here we can choose the state variables that we want to plot. We're going to click over here to select the displacement state variable and we're going to denote this, we're going to choose the solid dot this, this is basically the total displacement, double click and we click on plot and here is our displacement. This is our displacement field. You can see that displacements are in order of few millimeters. You can observe that displacements close to the boundary, to the fixed boundary. So if you click on fixed constraint, this is the fixed boundary. And you click on the volume, are blue, are, are approaching the blue color that is there approaching the zero deformation. And uh, the deformations uh, close to the edge, close to the free boundary, are in the order of three millimeters. And finally, if you want to create a nice animation of uh, basically plate deformation or temperature distribution, you can click on export and you can click on animation and you can click on file. Now, in this section, you can define the file name, let's say animation one. Here you can choose, do you want to plot the temperature? Do you want to plot the deformation? In case of deformation, you will obtain a graph that looks like this. And in the case of temperature, you'll obtain a graph that will look like this. Here you can uh, adjust the parameters, frames per second, number of parameters, and you can just click on export. And console multiphysics will create basically a GIF file after uh, everything has been finished, and your GIF file will look like this. This is the same GIF file that you saw at the beginning of this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.